Plant breeding is all about plant improvement, right? Each breeder has specialized knowledge of a specific crop and develops an effective strategy to improve that crop. They cross, evaluate, and select over multiple generations in multiple locations. It's a snappy sounding list. Cross, evaluate, select. This is the foundation breeders use to improve plants. Today we're going to get a closer look at the nuts and bolts of plant improvement as we take a look at a breeding program developed by Juan Asorno for dry beans. My name is Juan Osorno. I'm a dry bean breeder for North Dakota State University for the last uh, six years. I love what I do. The program begins with a cross between two plants. Many crops are self-pollinated, including beans, but at the beginning of the breeding process, two different plants are crossed with each other. Both plants have genetic diversity that will allow Juan to find new, more productive combinations of genes in each generation of progeny. Here right now in this room, we have what we call the, the crossing block. This is the beginning of everything. You are going to make the initial process after you choose your best parents that you want to combine with the goal of creating the new variety. And each one of those spots is a new combination that we're trying to come up with for the program. Let's look at one of many crosses that will take place in the early generation phase of Juan's program. The initial cross takes place in the greenhouse. Those seeds grow into F1 plants. The F2 plants grown from those seeds are evaluated and chosen for their vitality. Individual plants are selected and their seeds are planted and grown in rows. Each row of F3 plants is a family. This time, whole families are selected when they look promising. The family seeds become F4 plants. The plants that look robust are selected and their seeds become F5 plants. An entire row of F5 plants with potential will be selected and their seeds kept and planted in the next stage of the process. The early generation process spans five generations of increasing seed and selecting plants with desirable traits. Most of the selection that takes place is done visually. In each one of those generations, we're practicing selection and trying to narrow down the size of those populations. So we're just trying to get a prediction of what we think is gonna do based on the way they look, but you never know. So we're trying to look at those differences, recognize them and take the ones that we like. And that's part of the training part of the breeder. You, you kind of develop your eye or you train your eye to see certain things that call it a package, you know, you, you have certain traits, it's not just one thing that will tell you this is a good one. This package of genes will determine the limits of a plant's performance in different situations and is known as a genotype. Visual selection for traits and quality has been passed down through history by farmers. Today, acquiring an eye for this kind of selection is no less important as a plant breeder. And that's what people refer to as the art of the plant breeding. You know, you have the science, it's all genetics, but also you have that art of recognizing what is good and what is bad. You always have to keep in mind why you did that combination. What is the reason for doing that? And then try to aim your eyes for exactly what you're looking for. Because that's the goal, right? It's to, to come up with something that it's a leap forward uh, of the whatever we have commercially available right now, and then that's how we keep making progress. So we measure all those things in the field and also some in the lab, and we also extract DNA. And we use that information, we do a lot of statistical analysis, looking at this material, this genetic material, how is the performance of a given breeding line not only in one location, but also across multiple locations and across multiple years. Then those lines that you selected as good, based on mostly visual characters and sometimes molecular markers, you put them in, in, in what we call yield trials. So usually F6, they, they get plugged into the PYTs, preliminary yield trials. The advanced generations of selected plants have great potential to become a new variety. But even at this stage, results are not always consistent. 
you see the same genetic variability that gives these plants potential in a breeding program can make them unpredictable in a farmer's field. So as the breeding line is moved into the next stage of the process, selection becomes even more strict. Large amounts of data factor into the selection process in order to weed out inconsistencies. So we have to go through a process of genetic purification, making sure that everything is homogeneous and stable and won't change over time. It's so important to keep track of that long-term performance across years and locations because that's what the growers are going to have. They don't put things just one year, they grow across many years. Breeders also need to be good statisticians, so we use a lot of statistics in order to make our decisions. So it's not a subjective decision, it's a decision based on statistics. That gives you a better indication of how that line perform over time. And in order to do that, you use statistics, right? Because then you pull data from each one of those locations that you were testing every year, and you pull all those years together, and then uh, start doing what we know as combined analysis. And then looking at that whole big data set tells you about uh, the performance of that specific breeding land that you're interested in. Juan uses data to help him choose the best plants. It's within this data where the scientific side of plant breeding blossoms and the statistic smart side of the plant breeder flourishes. And you can be more confident, especially if you're seeing the same traits and the same trends at other locations and across several years. And that's a good indication of stability and, and a powerful genetic package that we're looking for. In the two to three years spent in preliminary yield testing, the breeding line is tested across many different locations. Out of approximately 600 genotypes entered into the preliminary yield testing, only about 200 proceed to the next stage of the process, the advanced yield trials. So in the AYTs, they, again, we probably have more locations to be tested, more years, and now you start, you know, creating that story I was telling you about several locations, several years, you see the big picture, and then it's me trying to pull together the, the whole story across years and across locations. That's my job. The selection process at this point is extremely strict. The breeder spends two to three years at this stage testing for breeding lines with the most potential as a new variety. And then, if something is looking really good after that, you plug it into what we know as the variety trials. That's when you put your breeding line against all the commercial varieties that are out there. Out of 200 breeding lines entered into the advanced yield trials, usually only two or three have proven themselves worthy of competing with commercial varieties. At this stage, the breeding lines are tested against the commercial varieties already in use. And that's when you're really going to see if you have something that is better somehow in any way to whatever is commercially available already. And that's when you're thinking about, okay, this is worth releasing because it yields more or because it has disease resistance or has better quality. The hope is that whatever is here as potential release will become a new variety in the future just because it was performing better than the commercial checks. That's the whole idea of having a variety trial. Yours is better in some way or with some trade. Then whatever is commercially available, go for it and release it because then it will be of benefit for the farmers and everybody. In the last 100 years or so, breeders have been able to pick up where farmers left off and focus their efforts in selecting the best plants possible for the field. While farmers are hard at work growing crops, breeders like Juan are hard at work looking at many plants, comparing molecular markers, running tests, crunching numbers, and recombining genes to find new crops that will perform even better than the ones they had before. <laughs>